All right. Had to do this one because um, I have a completely different way, in my opinion, a better way of answering this question. So um, take a look at the details. It is a bit tricky. Um, let me write down, I have my time diagram. Uh, they tell me that I have payments made at the end of each year. Okay, they're 2,500. So 2,500, 2,500 at the end of each year until I get to, well, the first 26 years. So all the way to right here. So they're made at the end of each year. So here's the 26th year, made at the end of the year. So 2,500. And then afterwards, uh, they decrease by 100. So the next one will be uh, 2,500. 400 etc now uh, they tell me also the principal repaid in year 26 so P sub 26 is the principal repaid in year 26. By the way, this is pretty much standard notation, just P sub 26. Not very creative or anything, but whatever that does it. Uh, we're interested in how much principal, how much of the um, loan did we actually, how much of the balance did we actually take off with our payment in year 26? <clears throat> so um, that's X, right? So that's X. So P 26 is equal to X. And here's the deal, here's the deal. And I'm a little surprised uh, that SOA didn't utilize this. Uh, if you have level payments, okay, um, if, you have, if you're paying off a loan with level payments, which we are in the first 26 years, uh, then you can actually say that the, the principal that you're paying off in each year, actually, um, that forms a geometric sequence. If I think of how much principal I paid off in year one, year two, year three, year four, up to 26, okay, um, those change by a common ratio. So let me show you, let me be a little more clear about what I mean. Um, <clears throat> because this is the principal I paid in year um, 26, I know what I, how much principal I paid in year 20, uh, 25. In the 25th payment, okay, then that means I paid um, whatever the 26, uh, the, the principal I paid in 20, uh, year 26, times V, okay? And if you want, actually, I can write this as V to the zero. And I'm gonna keep going. The principal paid in year 24 is, well, let's see, V to the one, V squared. So this is what I mean when I say that actually the amount of principal you're paying each year with your payments, as long as they're level, which they are in the first 26 years, um, those actually, form a geometric sequence. If I put commas between them, right, and I compare them, right? In other words, if I take this, P25 divided by P26 is V. P24 divided by P25 is V, etc. right? So if I keep going, and hopefully you can see a pattern, and let me just, I can just write this down in general, actually. And this, this was helpful some questions, because they can, sometimes they ask you just, what's the total, say, interest paid? And we're just more manipulation, but it's related to this, okay? Um, this can be helpful. Let me write down this in general. What is P sub T? What is P sub T uh, for T less than or equal to 26? I can't say anything after 26 because everything changes. It's no longer level anymore, right? Uh, but what I can say is that this is X uh, V to the 26 minus T. This is only for T um, for T for T what? T can't be greater than 26. All right, so it's for zero uh, less than or equal to t less than or equal to 26. Whenever you write down something like this, just make sure it checks. Uh, if t is 26, then I get x. t is 26, I get x. So that works out. If t is 25, then I get x v. Good. If t is 24, I get x v squared. Good. Why am I doing this? Because now I'm going to find the principal paid, principal portion of my first payment. Principal paid in year one. That's not what I want. I want the, the amount of interest paid in the first year. 
But what's the principal paid in the first year? So hence, what is the principal paid in year one? Well, replace t with one. This is x v to the 25. And you might be saying, well, why did they even, why did I even write this down? I mean, why did I even come up with that? I don't know. I could have just counted it, right? And gone down to uh, P1 and then figured it out that way. But whatever, it doesn't matter. I did it, get over it, right? All right, this is the principal paid in year one. What is the interest paid in year one? Think about this for a minute. There's so many different arguments for this kind of thing. But basically, the idea that I'm getting at is this. We know, let's just say, um, let's say I1 is the interest paid in year one. Uh, then what? Think about this for a second. I mean, whatever your payment is, in our case it's 2,500 for, for year one, whatever your payment is, okay, that's equal to how much interest you paid, how much of that payment was interest, and how much of that payment was principal. So in other words, the interest in, in year one plus the principal in year one is how much I paid, how much my payment was, excuse me, in year one. We're interested in I1. Oh, well then I1 is equal to 2,500 minus P1. Here's P1, so it's 2,500 minus XV25. And that is my answer. Um, you may be saying whatever, no big deal. Honestly, it's kind of not a big deal, but um, this is a good, a valuable thing to remember. It only works with level um, payments. Um, why did I bring this up? If you didn't do it this way, what you would have to do um, is you would actually have to find, we have a couple of choices. Um, one way to do it would be to find the actual loan amount. How would you do that? You'd find the present value of all this business. Is it decreasing annuity? as well as a level annuity, okay, then what most likely what you would do is you would use the retrospective uh, method for finding the interest paid in year one. That just means using the loan amount, accumulating it. Actually, you could just take uh, the interest of the balance, the interest of the loan. Regardless, um, <clears throat> you don't know what I'm talking about. Take a look at what SOA does. I think that's more or less what they're doing. I didn't really look at it too much, but all I did was notice that they didn't do this. My opinion is the easiest way. Uh, tell me what you think, and um, 